That's not good. And hello, welcome to Find Your Inner Flavor. I am Becky Schoenig, one of the co-hosts, along with my co-host. Really, oh, I'm no, I'm a host. host. You're kind of I've like a co-host. upgrade. You're, well, I don't feel promotion. Some, I'm by Greg. the time we get to the third recording of the day, yeah, <laughs> we just I'm, go I'm with whatever more, it is inclusive. that comes through. Uh, we are we're our, the hosts of Find Your Inner Flavor. We are also the co-owners in Symbol. We are a healthy lifestyle-focused restaurant located in Kirkwood, St. Charles, and in Chesterfield, Missouri. Um, we cater to a lot of those specialty diets that are out there. We want to take a moment and thank our sponsor, Nationwide Processing. Because if it weren't for our sponsors, we would not be sitting in the studio recording today. So Nationwide Processing, if you have been to any of the festivals out there and seen the ATM machines or in any of those small little businesses that have ATM machines out there where you're only being able to use cash when you're purchasing anything, a lot of the times that is Nationwide Processing. They bring the value of cash into the small business owner's hands, meaning when you use a credit card or a debit card, there is a percentage that that business owner is being charged. And by using cash, it puts 100% of the cash value into the business owner's hands. So thank you to Nationwide Processing for making this all possible. Let's go ahead and delve into this episode of Find Your Inner Flavor. Our guest, Corey, is here Good for the soul, good, the number four, and soul, S-O-L, shit out of luck is what it stands for, (laughs) right? (laughs) So we've got Corey in here today. We go way back. I remember when you first got out of, was it nutritional? Rehab. (laughs) (laughs) Most likely, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Food rehab. No, but you had just gotten out of, what was was your certification or what was your degree in nutritional... um, well, at that time, I was actually working for a bank doing accounting, nothing in math. Oh, my God, I don't even do math. But I had been doing nutrition for a total of 18 years. But right at that time when we had met, I think it was 2012. It was right. It was very soon after we opened up our Kirkwood mm-hmm. location. Exactly. And yeah. that is when I decided to break away from that and go full time with holistic nutrition and so, body therapy. So I think what you're talking about is I had just gotten my Reiki certification. Yes for energy, um, energy healing. And I was going full time with that. And so I was just starting to roll out. And you started doing some workshops and Mm -hmm. some little educational pieces in our basement. We've actually never had (laughs) drinks together. We've never gone out to eat together. We've never done anything, but that was our first connection. And I've watched and followed you develop throughout the years. Um, just like symbol has developed and grown throughout the years but there's something about you that I've always been attracted to, and that is how authentic and honest you are. You, you That's like what I've saying, been told. You like saying <laughs> the cuss words. I do. <laughs> it's my brand, I guess. Yeah. It's the best delivery. I don't know. <laughs> it is. And so when we were developing and creating more of this, I'm like going, Corey, I really want to pull you onto an episode. I want to pull you in. I love your content. You do a lot when it comes to re- recipes. And you're really all about the whole food eating concept. Yes. So absolutely. explain what whole food, what do you mean? When we yeah. say whole food, what exactly does that mean? So to me, whole food means, I'm going to keep it simple first and then I'll break it down. Whole foods is either it came from a mom or it came from the ground. And so after that, a lot of people think, well, aren't grains whole foods? And I'm going to say no for that right now. But I'm looking at meat that came from an animal, fish, fruits, Um, vegetables, all vegetables, nuts and seeds. Those are whole foods to me. Okay. So we talk about paleo. Mm -hmm. Um, There is a, I believe there is oftentimes a misconception in why somebody goes into paleo. I believe long-term paleo becomes a lifestyle. However, Mm -hmm. paleo short-term becomes a weight loss protocol. Usually kind of a debunking and why the philosophy of paleo is there. So can you explain what paleo in your mind is Mm -hmm. and how do you kind of differentiate that as a lifestyle versus a diet? So paleo to me is not a fad. I don't even think it's a diet. I think it's a way to eat and it dates back to our ancestors. And if you think paleolithic times, what was around then to eat? Animals, fish, vegetables, fruit, nuts, and seeds. 
And so usually when I, when I talk about paleo to clients or I bring up what that is, um, a lot of people think that it is grains, and it's not. Grains haven't been here very long. Um, well, even, uh, even the ones that were here until you know, modernization, 1900s, mm-hmm. they, they weren't this. I mean, They're radically nothing different. Like they are today. Radically different. Right, and they were sprouted. They were not genetically modified. They were wildly cultivated yes. and not in perfect rows. So I don't think it's a diet. I think it's a way to eat. I think it's sustainable. Um, I don't think it's a fad. I don't think it's elitist. Um, I also don't think it's restrictive. A lot of people tend to think it's restrictive. So why do you think they tend, why, why do you feel I think, yeah, what's think the that re- it's restrictive? What's the restrictor? I think what people think, what they've seen on TV, what they've seen in the grocery stores and with all of the wheat products and sugar and processed foods, when you take those away and you go back to just Mother Nature and the Paleolithic times of what cavemen might have eaten or what was really just given to us in nature, after you've been on the processed foods or sugars and you pull those out, that does seem like a restriction. And, well, and you're, you, you, I think that a lot of it is when you're talking about using 100% whole food, mm-hmm. you now have to cook. Exactly. And what? a lot of people <laughs> have forgotten how to cook. No, they, and they, they think never that, knew. Or they never knew. They I was going to say, knew. I don't know if, I, I mean, the, the Pinterest recipes that are out there oh, all over the, you know, you have that type of a persona of, a well, stick of cream cheese it's, and pepperoni and whatever else it right. is that you're putting into it, that becomes cooking. Your cooking is now using all So those uh, just right. quick segue in a, a little bitch session because that's <laughs> what I do. So we have three small restaurants and we hire young kids occasionally. Um, and we both have kids that are young. My children... Never grew up without a microwave. Never grew up without a computer um, or a calculator. Um, they w- will have people that will occasionally complain because um, making change is an issue with cash. And then I think about when I was with my kids when they were young, how often did they see me actually make a cash transaction? Sure. One out of 100? Everything else is credit card. They never actually saw that math happening. Uh, we've had vacuums and power sweeps and Swiffers. You know, how many kids grow up without ever actually seeing someone with a dustpan and a broom? Uh, you know, my kids are big in the scouting. We do some of that crap. And it's amazing how many kids I'll see grab a broom and be like, you actually don't know how to hold that. Because <laughs> probably you've never seen someone hold that. Um, mopping. Mm-hmm. Oh, my God. Mopping is maybe right. the worst thing ever. So we're, we're, I don't want to defend people, but we've had, you know, a full generation, if not two, that, yeah, they've not cooked. They've never taken flame to something. They've never cut something. I so, think what you're saying, in a sense, is we've become so industrialized that people don't know how to do it the old way or they've never seen it, or they're so bogged down with the toxicity of industrialization that they can't even fathom thinking of where to start or what any of this means. And so so if we go back to what Whole Foods is, Whole Foods is getting your food in the most natural state possible. Here we are in 2018 where, you know, we have so many things available and other resources to... um, keep shelf life of foods, sustainable, all these things. But to me, it's can you get that food without it being processed, manhandled, or fortified with What's something? Or- <laughs> you said the get wrong right right words in front of Greg. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so Man. let's talk about, because here's the but thing. Totally you're, really, you're really well educated in all this. So somebody who's educated, somebody who enjoys cooking, mm-hmm. um, and I didn't always enjoy cooking. 
at all. I was the biggest fast food junkie in really? the world. Oh my Ooh, god! What, really? So what what was you, your favorite? Yeah. Oh my god! Like, it still is my favorite, but I can't touch it. Um, I have a lot. Do you want the list? Give me a couple. Talk okay. Dirty. Yeah. Talk um, dirty. Talk really talk dirty. Talk to food us dirty. Right now. Yeah, yeah. Food dirty. Dirty uh, food talk. That's a what thing. were your favorites? This is like a crime. Okay, um, Jack in the Box, Ultimate Cheeseburger. Hold oh, on. You ever had the Monster? <laughs> the Monster Tacos oh, oh, yeah. with Buttermilk Ranch. And if they left oh my, my Buttermilk God. Ranch out, I was pissed. <laughs> and I would specifically ask for four. <laughs> for four? Yes. Four Did you, lick, did you lick them Wait clean? No, it was two Monster Tacos, four Buttermilk Ranches, two for each. Yeah. Yeah, that's a shit And song. if I had extra, I would use the... The French fries and dip it in. Okay, what? Oh, wow. wow. <laughs> <laughs> Matt's drooling back there oh, right now. It's, it's disgusting. And Stacey's it's disgusting. shaking her head right now. So. Mm. <laughs> and right. She's like, this is dirty Ooh. talk right now. Okay, okay, and what else? What else? Um, okay, so the quesadillas from Taco Bell, the chicken quesadillas, extra cream sauce, whatever the hell that shit storm is. Extra. Okay, so what made you change? Yeah, like, what was it? Uh, my what was health. the trigger? Your I okay. had two decades. Oh, so my parents did not start, did not feed me this way. My parents, every time we came home, we sat down five o'clock after school and we had fresh meals. Both of my parents cooked. So growing up, I always had fresh meals. And then high school hit and I got a license. And then I was um, like, I'm free. I can go and eat in any drive through possible. There was one month, I think, I kid you not, I had, this is so gross. I had, for like lunch and dinner for probably a whole month straight. The McDonald's um, chicken sandwiches with extra mayo. <laughs> I mean, it's a miracle that I'm alive today. Seriously. So this was when you were a teenager. Yep. Growing up, your mom and dad made all your food. Then you go to all of this. You kind of rebel. I think it's all, I think that's just life in general. And everything becomes fast then. I was yeah. cheerleading. I was dancing at the time, and it was like. And you weren't thinking anything at a time. Of it. Okay, well, so oh, when, well, not only were you not thinking, you were told you didn't have to think. Well, yeah, well, you don't. I mean, yeah, they're, they're, I mean, it's who doesn't McDonald's, like a happy right? meal? You get the damn fries, you get yeah. the cheeseburger, and, and you get the drink and a toy, and I and save it, them all, all. All white meat, you know, all white meat chicken nuggets. I don't know if it was really all white meat. I think no, it's like well, caulk. No, they well, did I think that back now. in the day, back then, when you were in high school, I think there was a but little bit there, more maybe meat. Maybe it was yeah, a little there bit was more, a little bit more meat recently. in there. Okay, so when did you make the shift? Why okay, did you make the shift? I made the shift probably right when I graduated out of high school. That's young. And that is when that was at the time was I was like managing. Three or four years ago. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> Thanks, though. You're <laughs> I was managing a Sally Beauty Supply, and I was delivering all over the products every Friday. And we happened to deliver to this spa in Webster that had happened to focus on holistic healing and living and nutrition. And I walked in, and I was like, oh, my God, what is this place? What spa was this? This is Vitality Unlimited Spa okay. Okay. in Webster. I yep. think they're still there. They are. I'm not sure if the owner is still the same, but it was. Well, yeah, they're getting plugged anyway. The, yeah, well. Yeah, well. Um, anyways, that became my home. I quit Sally Beauty Supply and I walked into this place and I was like, this is my home. This is exactly what I need. And I was also starting to notice a decline in how I felt too, health wise. So you, so you went from this lifestyle and it was zero knowledge, no information. You walked into a place, you were I energized by it. it. You loved Okay. It was wow. beautiful there. And then there. all of a sudden you started shifting. I got hungry for more information on what this holistic, metaphysical healing, nutrition thing was. And that was it. It was over. I was in bookstores, grabbing books, learning from my mentor at the time. And um, I got hungry. And that's how I started learning about nutrition, how to cook. I remember my mentor said, okay, oh, because I was dealing with stomach problems. And uh, really? my stomach was on fire. I mean, it was like on fire. It had nothing to do with their double ranch monster dressing. Monster tacos. <laughs> Not the monster tacos. <laughs> nope. Refuse to acknowledge that. But that's what it was. I had so, I had too many years of terrible food. And my mentor started teaching me. And I remember she told me one day, you know, go and get some millet. And I was like, okay. And I'm looking at this millet. Did you go and to like, the this hardware like store and the bird seed? <laughs> I was going to say. What the fuck? What do you do with bird seed? So I just threw the bird seed in a pot because she said cook it. 
And I'm like, this shit's not cooking. I don't. And then she said, throw in blueberries. I'm like, okay. I took the blueberries and threw the blueberries in. And I'm like, I can't eat this. I'm texting her. I don't understand how you can eat millet. This stuff is not cooked. And she's like, did you grind it? And I'm like, I don't even have, what do you, no, I don't have a grinder. What's. What do you mean by grinding? I, exactly. I had no clue how to cook anything, but like throw Totino's pizza rolls. That was one. Uh, Pepperoni. Ooh. In the microwave. So it was then. It was what? like right then and there I knew. Microwave them. Yeah, I did. No, oh. well, then eventually I learned Toaster. Stove. Oh, I got <laughs> Stove. Toaster. Toaster oven. Sacrilegious. Yes. I learned. They're good. I put them back in the oven. They're delicious. And that was when I started learning more and more and more about food. I learned about the blood type diet back then. And then I had learned <laughs> all the... Eat right for your blood type. Everything. Yeah. But you know what? That did save me. That saved me. That pulled me it out made, of feeling so terrible. You, made you do certain things. But exactly. you were the one that you, so metaphysically or intuitively, you started, you were gravitated in this direction. You were energized by it and you started shifting and changing. I was very similar in regards to, I was going to, no, I was not going to massage therapy school at the time. I was working for, um, some life coaches, I was doing more sales with their, you know, events and different things like that. And I wound up going to work for a naturopath who did colon hydrotherapy and I got certified. I studied oh, under her for several months. Know your shit. <laughs> I learned how to read shit really, really well. And it was all of this information and knowledge that was really foreign. Like I had never, you know, when you, it's, in, it's interesting and we're going to talk, you know, just to talk about shit and how it, I mean, how, what that looks like. And it's like this, when you talk about, I'm going to say these things in a really kind of mm. nasty snot, you know, mucus, but mucus, yeah. but when you are going through this process and you see this going through pipes, you're going, you've got to cut out all dairy. You've got mm -hmm. to cut out all milk. You can't do this kind of thing. And then those where all the allergies are coming from and how, so much information is stored inside your body exactly. and how you're guided to all of these resources and then it's self-education and the mentors and all of that kind of thing moving forward. You move out of ignorance into like being in the know and it's Yeah. Impossible. And once you go there, you can't you really can't go, go back. back. <laughs> no. That's exactly what happened. <laughs> yeah. So let's talk about some things because being in the not so no, not knowing what we have, but knowing branding, labeling, mm -hmm. we become what we, what you like to say is sheeples. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah. So we get hooked onto whatever the next branding terminology right now, what we're dealing with is or the wording organic, all natural, non GMO, all these mm -hmm. different things. We went to, I'm going to kind of hand these over to you two as experts. Um, we went into what we consider one of the healthiest rest or not restaurants, healthiest grocery stores out there. Somebody were to say, go to Whole Foods. We're talking about the average person saying, oh, I'm going to Whole Foods. I'm, I'm making a lifestyle change, all this kind of stuff. I'm eating natural. Yeah. I'm eating natural. Or clean. I'm clean. Clean. Oh, clean's a good one. Whatever. That's okay. a real so good one. So we found three products. You two talk well, about these products a little bit more. We'll save this one. Versus That's what a we good do. one. That's a fun one. That one's particularly <laughs> fun. Last. These are actually kind of fun, but on different ways. So let's get ours. Okay. Because shameless plug, <laughs> uh, our autoimmune no tomato AIP pasta sauce, which is here, and not the most. I mean, obviously these boys pay a lot more for their packaging because they're pretty. So the the first thing, this little jobby, which um, artfully, you know, cut out the manufacturer, but organic tomato, basil, pasta sauce. It has that beautiful, we paid for it, USDA organic. Also the non-GMO verified. And then no sugar added. Gluten-free? Did you miss uh, that one? Where is it? Is there gluten-free? Oh. It's they, not on there? Oh my holy God. shit, did they not oh, pay for it? I'm and surprised. Actually, they I love that one. But I wonder where the gluten is in then. <laughs> They or they forgot that one. Oh, hey, you bastard. The editor didn't Slacking. recognize Seriously, that branding yeah. terminology. Um, and just so everyone watching, whoever watches, 
These two are probably pretty pissed off that they are next to each other because the organic and the non-GMO people do not like each other because they're both vying for, like, who's more important recently. Mm -hmm. um, and it's really kind of funny in an in a obscure okay, way. Okay, so talk about anyway, what's, it, so, what's specifically in it then. Well, but, I mean... Because if uh, I saw this, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm like, walking oh, into the grocery it's, store. It's organic. Look at this ripe tomato. And, oh, look at all these little certifications that they have. Must be clean, right? Oh, and look, it even says glass jar. So that's like this Recyclable. recycling bin. And then on the back here, we have this whole little spiel, this nice little uh, quote from the producer. And what does it say? Oh, farm to fork. Hmm. Our tomatoes bring bright, bold <laughs> flavor to the table. They're grown on organic farms while they're drenched in California sunshine. Wow. That's this is so fresh. Okay, we've got three more products, so you gotta yeah, like got, speed this. Sorry. <laughs> uh, however, the first freaking ingredient is tomato puree, organic water, and organic tomato paste. Okay, so tell me why. Okay, that's tomato, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. About God knows how many years ago. Okay, so why? And where did they get the paste from? Is that farm to fork? Well, I mean, it came from a farm. So, okay, but, this but where's is, the real? To, where is there a tomato in there? Yeah, tomato puree. Oh no, they do have organic tomatoes. Okay, so that's the, a second but that's ingredient. a second ingredient. It's second. So, so this is what we're starting to recognize and realize, even with us. She's starting keeping us to, on track. I know. I have to kind of keep reining you guys back in, or him it. back in, anyway. Because <laughs> I'm busy. But this is what we're <laughs> starting to recognize and realize when we're talking about whole food ingredients. Mm -hmm. Mass producing it is not the easiest not, thing out it's there. It's not easy. It, right. There, there are hurdles. However, it's disingenuous. The, the whole labeling, the marketing on this, and then the first ingredient isn't actually just tomatoes. tomatoes. You have a, fur, a, a highly further process. Do we have any sugar in that? Is there any sugar in that product? Yes, uh, somewhere, somewhere, somewhere. No, 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 no. It said sugar free, so I'm no, yeah, I guess it, it did. Oh, well, so that one does but not. But you never know. However, you have concentrated tomato paste, so they're. That's so basically what's happening is they're taking the tomatoes, they're concentrating it down. So everybody knows what a tomato looks like. Well, Turn that into something that looks uh, more like a, a, a like makeup or a skin lotion. Some really, really, we you know what tomato paste looks like. Um, there's not a vine ripened California sun but dried it, tomatoes. But in their branding and in their labeling, they are creating an image and a feeling as if I am doing something right. Good for the world. I'm, oh, I'm oh, this is purchasing so something that is a whole tomato kind of a thing. And when you dive into understanding and reading the label, you're recognizing there's a lot of processes taking place. A lot place of processes. I see a lot of organic thrown up, but I also see things like calcium chloride added, right. which is basically a stabilizer. There's nothing technically wrong. It's, it's a recognized as safe ingredient. However, it's unnecessary. But all it is is cosmetic um, because they're not using... 100% natural ingredients in their natural state and processing them simply, they're mass producing this on an industrial level. Um, and that's where the, the- For convenience. For convenience and very, very specifically cosmetically. They're using tomato paste because as anyone who's grown a tomato, they come off different times, different ripeness, different shape, water, all of that. Mm -hmm. They're controlling that by making an artificially reduced concentrate. Okay, so let's then. go into the other tomato All right, stuff. So you've got another one there also. This one actually, organic, again, whatever. It, it They've separated the USDA and the non-GMO, so they don't <laughs> so fight. So they're not like they're not fighting. up and crying. However, you know, again, this is where you can just simply look at a label and the first ingredient, tomatoes, onion, extra virgin olive oil. There is nothing on here that I'm like, I have to look this shit up. Literally right. speaking, so this is a prob product. probably half of America, because the other half is eating your monster tacos. Um, half of the yeah, half of the country probably has these things in their house right now and could make this. So is the, this Correct. is a product that you would say yes? This one yes is m this is one I could say. You know what? This is actually real food. Decent. Is okay. it canned? Is it processed? Of course it is. 
there's a you know that's there's not the that's not the devil. Okay, so you know, let's talk about what that, makes cause... ours different and superior and on top. <laughs> this feels like an infomercial. All it of is a sudden. an infomercial. <laughs> so the only thing that we're yeah you know, the only thing we're really doing here is that we're looking at whole food, and I would say we are more like this. We are more on this real food thing. The only difference is we're tweaking it because of our customer base that can't do nightshades, mm -hmm. that are autoimmune resist, you know, have autoimmune issues. Um, so we've taken out that nightshade component, which is the toma tomatoes specifically, tomatoes in a peppers, pasta sauce. Correct. So okay. things that you would think of traditionally, we've substituted our ingredients. But again, our ingredients we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. We have eight ingredients in here. One of them is salt. Um, one of them is basil, uh, and the rest is a whole food ingredient. One of the things that we've tried to do is following your path uh, or your what you were said earlier was actually have whole food. Yes, it's processed, it's pureed, um, but there was nothing that went into this product that you wouldn't recognize. Exactly, there wasn't anything that was so made into a, a a paste in a in a mega factory. So hand the barbecue sauce over to Corey. Oh, she gets to talk. About I know. It. I'm like going, Greg. God, shut the <laughs> up. I have to breathe. So what, all, right, <laughs> but, all right, here. But this is great because this is a. <laughs> yeah. Give me a sauce. Shut up. That's a that. This is a <laughs> lay, a house label, and I came in and heard you saying the same thing that is the first thing that I said about it. So, what is your take on this product? Okay. Well, first of all, I'm looking at this one. It has 11 grams of sugar. Why the hell do you need this much sugar in barbecue sauce? Then I okay. So hold on a second. This one is non-GMO verified. Mm. Um, the non-GMO seems to be a oh, trendy, they love it. Trendy they love it. Right they now. love that label. I mean, people would love to see that label. But um, in my opinion, why do we even have to have this damn label? That's like. Well, it's it's all uh, all right. We'll segue there. It's also a little disingenuous because we've been modifying shit. It doesn't mean what I think people think it means. I, I think when they think of non-GMO, um, they're specifically thinking of taking octopus genes and splicing them into a corn, you know, plant. And it does mean that, but everything we've planted has been modified to some degree. Sure. Um, so I think there there needs to be a separation between is I don't want to say naturally Mary, like ducks and turtles to that that is what people think of, mm -hmm. but that's not exactly what it's all, not all GMOs. Yeah, so Correct. it's like there 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 are massive amounts of difference, and I think that has been used to propagandize way too much. Okay, so. What's your take? Corey? Okay, so again, here on this one, the first ingredient is oh, this one says it's vegan and fat free. Well, that's great, right? Tomatoes, I mean, like, tomatoes are fat free. So I don't know. I love the labeling these days, they crack me up. Um, okay, so the first one is tomato puree, puree. That's again, paste. Then brown sugar is next. That's number two. Then oh. molasses. Much more so we've sugar. Got two Which sugars. is basically brown sugar that doesn't have all the water taken out. Second and third ingredient. Okay, then after that, cornstarch? Really? To thicken this. They needed to add cornstarch. Um, then there's cane sugar again. So we've got, th we're up to Out three. Of well, actually, starch essentially is sugar. Car oh. So the top four ingredients are, well, even top four ingredients are true yeah. sugar. And then caramel color. Oh, I love that. I mean, why? Okay. Because it makes it look pretty. But this is pretty. That's that's pretty. Well, this is this our is so this is sauce. our barbecue sauce. So this is our barbecue sauce, which again we're starting to gear into the no tomato, autoimmune, and the whole. But you guys didn't use caramel color, did you? Mm, no. 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 So we use golden raisins. <laughs> yeah, you, a we food. could. A food. Okay, but here, yeah. okay, food. a actually naturally occurring food. Right. Yeah. So let's crazy that. Let's turn this around, because how does somebody start? Somebody who well, like yourself navigating this crap. Yeah. How does somebody start navigating through this? You're the person that once went through the t yeah. Taco Bell drive-through, and the McDonald's drive-through. To all of a sudden now saying I'm better informed, I'm better educated, and now how do I go shopping? 
So how here's do I, what how I how do I navigate? Here's what I tell people: if you are doing what I was doing decades ago, and you know that you you cannot do this anymore, you have to eat clean, and you don't know where to start. That's terrifying, and it's overwhelming. And the internet has so much information on it too, but that's still overwhelming. And then you don't know who to believe either. And the definitions of clean eating are so all over the place. It gets really, really confusing, and that keeps people from going any further. They just stay where they are because at least they know that. At least they can eat. They have full tummies. They still feel like crap. So usually what I tell my clients is someone has done the work for you in a cookbook. Get a paleo cookbook. There's a bunch of them. I don't know if you want me to label off a few. Go ahead. Yeah, please do. There's one that I specifically love. Um, It's Diane Sanfilippo. She's the author, and it's called Practical Paleo. This woman has put together everything you could ever imagine. I don't care if you need AIP, if you need adrenal support for stress, if you've got cholesterol issues, if you are an athlete and you need to eat super duper clean. Um, There's uh, a section in there for diabetes, yet the entire book is 100% paleo. So all whole foods, no processed sugars. The only sugars that you would have if you're allowed to have them, would be uh, organic local honey or um, grade A or B maple syrup. Those would be your, your sugars if you were to add or make a paleo treat of some sort. The rest is going to be a meat of some sort, fish, vegetables, fruit, nuts, and seeds. That's exactly what Paleo is or whole food eating. It's all the outside skirts of the grocery store. We talk about that all the time. Nothing really inside. It's, really, it's, it isn't. It really is. We, we've we've said that we're the restaurant that kind of we are the outside of the grocery store yeah. sort of mm-hmm. restaurant. Yeah. And so what I usually tell people is, it's hard if you haven't been cooking and you've been eating a lot of fast food. It's hard for you to come up with your old school recipes if you did have any type of cooking experience and try and make them clean. You're going to hate your meal. It's going to taste disgusting. And then you're just going to say, forget it. I'm not doing this. So buy buy the resources that are already out there that take this step out. It's already stressful enough trying to get clean food in, in your mouth, especially if your tongue is conditioned to eating a lot of fat and sugars and processed foods. Yeah. So get a cookbook just to start with. And my suggestion is start with just a few days. If you haven't done this at all and all you've been eating is junk, start with just a few days and pick out the things that look really good to you in the cookbook, write the ingredients down, and then go to the store and get them. Make them. See how it tastes. That's so, going to help you feel accomplished. Well, That's going to help you feel. I'm one that used to live off of the Pillsbury cookbook, <laughs> <laughs> Betty Crocker, all those fun things. <laughs> and as I have moved more and more into whole food cooking, my cooking style has different. So I used to do, you know, open up the can of Pillsbury dough, do the croissant rolls over. Mm-hmm the chicken with the creamed chicken mm, sauce and, the, right. and the rice and whatever else that you were putting in there and the cream cheese. We like bringing up cream cheese all the time. To where now it really is, I do I do typically eat very similar to how we cook in the kitchen, in the restaurant at Symbol, but I cook very differently. One, I don't like following recipes, but I clean my cupboards and my refrigerator out before I typically go back into the grocery Mm -hmm, store. mm -hmm. And I do all of my cooking on a Saturday or Sunday. I will do two to three meals on a Saturday or Sunday. And then that's what everybody kind of eats throughout the the week. Yeah. Yeah, That's a good idea. Yeah. Because that to me, I'm not usually home until after seven o'clock, most weeknights. I don't like cooking every single night. That's not what I enjoy Mm -hmm. any longer. And when you're actually cooking with whole foods, it is a little bit more time consuming. It is. Well, yeah. It is. Once you get started and you get an idea and then you also see, here's what I like in her cookbook because I think it's helped so many of my clients is that every single recipe has a picture. I don't know about you, but I can't open up a cookbook and you tell me this is going to be like some Southwestern skillet. And I'm like, well, what the hell does it look like? What are we going to make? Dirt. You, I, mean, I know. I'm a picture person. I need a person picture. Too. I need to like see if that's gonna look good. 
I'm like, I'm visual with my food. I love food. It's like food porn. It is food porn. Yeah. So I have to see that. And if you, once you've like seen what that's going to look like and it looks appetizing and you go to the store and you get these things, you can decide and you can plan how you're going to cook that. Are you a person that can cook every night? Can you cook it up in an hour? Or do you need to plan and cook all day on Sunday? I'm not one of those people because I don't. I want to play on Sunday. So you're going to have to decide. And once you get going and you get on a little schedule, you're going to figure out that, oh, wow, okay, I don't feel restricted. This is not a fad. I feel really good. And you get on a roll. Yeah. And you start realizing that, oh, this is the way I should have been eating the whole time. And it's actually kind of easy and that this is just how you, this is just what you do. Okay. A question. Why are peanuts not allowed in paleo? So peanuts are technically not a nut. They're a legume and legumes are beans. Um, the reason why legumes or peanuts are also not paleo is that you can't just go in the wilderness and like pick it off and eat it right then. You're going to break a tooth. It has to go through a lot of processing and soaking and in hopes that you remove all of the phytates. What are those? Phytates are a natural biological occurring chemical that are in a lot of grains and in legumes and peanuts. And what they do when you start eating them is that they start to um, leach and take your own vitamins and minerals that you've eaten from other paleo healthy foods that day. So you kind of slowly become deficient. You start pooping them out, peeing them out, because that's what phytates do. We don't really have enzymes to digest phytase or phytates. We don't, well, we don't have the enzyme called phytase. And why do those plants even have those? It's their only defense mechanism. So like a skunk, you get sprayed. We can hit, kick, punch, spit, whatever. But plants, they can't do that. And so plants, their only defense mechanism is to have these biological um, chemicals that they produce to keep animals or like us humans, from eating them. And okay. technically, peanuts, too, are a really good source of, like, E. coli and mold. Okay. So, so another question that I have when it comes to paleo, and one of you two can answer, answer it, um, the Atkins diet was huge mm. back in the, I want to say, late 80s, 80s or 80s, 90s, something like that. Oh, it's coming back. It's well, I think it will always kind of come back around. There's an but it was out there. really oh, what yeah. the whole Atkins thing was eliminating any uh, gluten for the most part, any mm. grain starches. Didn't matter if you went any carbs. Any carbs, carbs. whatsoever. Yes, yeah. correct. Any carbs whatsoever. So you could go through the McDonald's drive thru, get a double cheeseburger or a double quarter pounder with cheese, and as long as you took the bun off of it, you were completely fine to eat that. Paleo, can we? Can you guys go into the protein side of things? Because I think there is an importance when we're talking about what is a clean protein versus the commercial or com common protein that's out there. Uh, One, let's talk about uh, sandwich meat. Oh, okay. Jesus. Lunch meat. So lunch meats. I mean, they're not the worst thing in the world, and they're fantastic for when you're traveling and can't eat airport food or if you don't have, like, a steak to just sit down and dig into in your car or on an airplane. They're not the worst thing in the world. Just try to find the cleanest ones, the ones with no nitrates, no MSGs, no gluten added or anything like that. But that, again, is still not the most fresh, unprocessed meat available. So when we do talk paleo... We're talking chicken, like the chicken leg, chicken thighs, chicken breasts, steaks, um, bacon, pork, um, pork chops, all like the fresh meats that you would either have to grill, saute, or roast. Okay. And you can take those the next day and figure out ways to get that protein in. But there are some paleo... Um, not processed, junky lunch meats or beef sticks on the market that are not the worst thing What in the world. is the separation between commodity chicken, so the chicken that you're just... Okay. Greg, go ahead. Oh, uh, yeah. Soapbox time. <laughs> so um, the problem I see with just a blanket statement there is the consumer is not understanding and isn't meant to understand 
what can be sold as a whole muscle or a whole natural protein that has things done to it. Um, for instance, you're allowed to have a certain level of brining um, and solution added to meats and not disclose them. Um, there's major retailer that any, any package that comes in the little, like, you know, six by nine, really pretty package that has a clear film over the top, there's probably some shit in it. Um, it's been pumped with a solution of you know, usually like sodium phosphate, um, it, the package itself is gassed in carbon monoxide, so clear smoke can retain color and texture. So are um, we looking at having to read a label if we're going to the, to the grocery store? Unfortunately, and just find yes. Chicken breast. Yeah, if you think, mm -hmm. oh, I just want chicken breast, yeah, you actually have to read a label and you have to know what to look for because you can. So fresh chicken can actually be, uh, I don't know the actual temperature, but I believe it's 27 degrees. It can be held at 27 degrees, which we all know to be freezing, but can be held at that temperature, which slows down, um, you know, it prolongs the shelf life, but can still be considered fresh, what, not frozen. So what makes something, so then the next question is, is but why? But they're pumping that with how, different What about things. an organic chicken? Is organic... Is that doesn't word mean organic a, mean doesn't anything? Mean a fucking thing. So one of the debunks really. that we always have out there, and this is why we love working Not with necessarily. the small. Not necessarily. One I mean, of the it does, but yeah. One Not of the really. reasons we love working with the small local farmers and what we've started learning is the more farmers you talk to, the more down the rabbit hole you wind up going as to why certain <laughs> things are the way that they are. Matt mm -hmm. at Buttonwood Farms, perfect example. His chicken, it is organically. I mean, his chickens run out there in the fields. Mm -hmm. They scratch in the dirt. They eat bugs. Pastured. Yes. Um, yes, they're always finished grain finished yeah, you, because yeah. you're t you're talking about feeding hundreds and hundreds of chickens out there. Um, and we chickens. pay five dollars a pound in our restaurant to bring in the chicken. Most consumers in their home are not even paying five dollars a pound to no. go to the Com grocery store. Commodity, commodity chicken. Commodity, last, chicken. <laughs> commodity chicken. Last time I. I looked on a wholesale level was around a buck 70. So when we talk about organic, this is why we're always kind of like that 50, 50. Yes. Organic is valuable. However, somebody, when it comes to Matt and organic chicken, he is, he is doing a completely organic process. However, his processor would need to be certified organic in addition to Matt being certified organic in order for the label to then say certified organic. Yes, and he that can, is not and going to happen in the he Midwest. He can't get his chicken processed or cut without it being government inspected. Yeah. So his 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 options are really none. Mm -hmm. um, and it's Shame. is it, but this is this is a lot of why we're bringing oh, we this education organic. out well, into. It's about asking the questions, organic, and having money. the relationships with the people that you have because you trust it. I have one more question: casings. What when somebody says casing free, what is casing? What casein. does casing mean? Oh, casing, yeah, mean ca casing, yeah, C A S E I N, whatever, casein. however you spell casein. it. I don't know how to spell it. Casein, yeah, mm -hmm. what um, is it? It's an, is it an additive to some of the lactose and, it's in, it's, and addictive it's, too, I believe. It's a, it's a protein that's found in primarily dairy, dairy. yeah. Mm -hmm. So casein and can still cause. Problems with yes. those who have lactose mm -hmm. issues. That's usually, usually the, like the steps down. So, for instance, um, someone who can't have dairy, my father, uh, who is in one minute, yeah, my father who's in Florida, um, <laughs> has developed a lactose slash casein allergy. Cheese and some of those things that are for the process where the the actual manufacturing of cheese breaks down those proteins, he can do in small amounts. But if he were to drink, uh, you know, a cup of milk, he would be cramped up mm -hmm. and terrified. You know, it'd be it would be really rough on him. So it's basically the, the ability to process certain proteins. Same thing with gluten. Uh, you know, in a natural state, natural amounts, we can handle it. But then when we get, I don't want to say 
you know, inflamed or when there's something, when there's something that's compromised, that's when issues happen. And then it kind of like snowballs from there. Mm-hmm. You know, Especially again, if digestion is poor. Yeah. It's, 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 it's like that cut that you, you know, okay, I, I cut my finger. Well, if I clean it, if I bandage it, I'm probably good. If I cut my finger and I just let it go, eh, you know, it's not going to heal great. If I cut my finger and then I, you know, put it in all sorts of muck and I don't take care of it at all and I keep ripping it open, I'm probably going to infect and have a big issue. So it's, you know, the same sort of thing as no, under normal circumstances, you're fine. But then if you don't take care of yourself, that's when things balloon. Okay. And unfortunately, our diets, as far as I can tell, our diets today, we continue to allow ourselves to. So, Corey, where out. can people find you? How can they get more She's resources? She's right here. I know. So, right here. Um, well, so I am a private practice, so you're not going to find me in the public, public, but you can, but I'm open to the public. <laughs> Um, goodforthesoul.com is my website. Give it like a week or two. It's under construction as of the first of this year. Um, you can call me at 314-478-4510, or you can email me at cory.shitlin, that's C-O-R-I dot S-C-H-E-I-T-L-I-N at yahoo.com. I was like and a cheerleader response it, well, I was there. a cheerleader. Yeah, so I know. Yeah. B. I can add I, a dance. A-N-A, A-N-A whatever. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, and we're hoping that Corey is going to be joining us a little bit more on the Find Your Inner Flavor brand because we love her resources. We love your recipes. I've been following you for quite some time. I love how you articulate things. I love how you pull things in to just the human aspect of eating whole and eating healthy. So hopefully um, in the future, you're going to find Corey and some of her recipes and resources on the Find Your Inner Flavor website. We want to take a moment and thank the Gaslight for creating a space that allows us to come in here and be creative. Media Outlaws, Matt, thank you for standing behind us in all of that is that we are doing in here. We've got three cameras in here. We're being edited live, and we get to walk out of here with our product to be able to deliver it to you with the education that you have to move forward. Mark, thank you for being back there and doing the audio for our iTunes side of things and nationwide processing for making it possible to bring this to you. Education is what the Find Your Inner Flavor brand is all about. Symbol is our restaurant. It is how we got started. And because of the customers walking in, it's why we've delved into the educational side. And by bringing the resources and the practitioners and the experts in the field like Corey, Dr. Olivia, Dr. Jason, and so many others out there. We want to thank you and we will see you next time. Cheers.